Dr. Danielle, let me ask you about this. Um, to me, that makes it more plausible. If you've got problems in your relationship at home, it makes it more believable to me that you're going to reach out and you're going to have an affair with someone and perhaps it's someone you see every day, your boss. I don't hear you very clearly. Hi, thanks for being on here. But I think you asked me if you have problems at home, then maybe you're reaching out to your boss. Uh, let's let me first me first say that I didn't assess Schneider Marimann, but I reviewed the documents uh, of in session, and I think it becomes very clear that there was an affair, not a relationship. There's a difference. A relationship demands friendship. That means trust, and that builds over time. It also demands open communication. You're going the same way, meaning that you know what you want. Is it a one-on? one or is it kind of an open relationship it also actually demands having a physical attraction that was certainly there and the lifestyle do you like manhattan or do you like alaska what you want so i'm sure they had an affair workplace um actually affairs are on the rise and men and women are equal opportunity offenders well yeah it does take two to tango right i, I want to take a listen here to andrea snyderman because uh she absolutely denies it and she did it on the stand He said that they had, um, they went to the lake and sat at the lake and talked and then they went, had a drink and then they went back up and had a really nice dinner and then they went back upstairs to the hotel room and they ended up in the same hotel room. I don't know which, which room. Did he tell you what happened once they ended up in the same hotel room? What he told me was that she gave in. That is actually Hemi Newman's friend. And it seems like all the friends are testifying. And, and you know, you're in an affair. You're going to tell somebody, right? Or are you going to keep it secret? Which makes it more believable here? Well, here, apparently, Hemi Newman is telling his friend, Melanie White, that, yeah, they had an affair. She finally gave in. Dr. Danielle, I want to ask you about this. And, and you know, Andrew Snyderman is so vehement in saying, like, no, it didn't happen. I mean, is, is there any possibility here that, that this affair is taking place just in Hemi Newman's mind, that he's obsessed with her and he's telling people he's having an affair even though they're not actually sleeping together? The fact is, you know, there's different types of affair. I said, said that before. Relationships have several pillars. An affair can purely be um, physical or, for example, sexual. But an affair does not start in bed. It starts in people's heads. And actually, she made various statements. She said that she loved his attention. Um, there were little things, like he get, uh, gave her a foot massage, and she told him so. They had wine together and ended up having that wine in the same bed. So in my opinion, no. She also replied to all of his emails. If a person feels harassed or uncomfortable, you can go to HR and complain. Or you can talk to your boss and say, you know, I know and I appreciate you love me or you think you're in love with me, but I'm dedicated to my husband. I do think that it escalated. People spend a lot of time at work and that means they are together. So professional often gets mixed up with the private. It goes maybe on at home. It's a little bit monotone because we have that relationship for a long time and there's suddenly a spark. Someone is listening to you. And I think she bought into that too. We also have her report that in August, actually, when they were in bed together and had wine, she emailed him the next day saying, well, I have to repent that. He also said they did everything but were um, um, actually, actually, and everything but they had no intercourse. But so that was an emotional affair and they might have been sexual. We don't know in what way. But I do not think that it was just made up in his mind. She participated. She answered his emails, his phone calls. She even set up a meeting with her husband. And this is what we call a triangulation. She brings the husband in and first she brings the other man in her relationship. Wow. What does this all mean though? That if in fact they're having an affair, is it, uh, uh, are they conspiring together? An investigation. Yeah. Dr. Daniela, how about from your perspective, why do you think that uh, he, he denies that affair during his, his interrogation? Initially, he does it to protect her. And also, I think the breaking point with this, too, actually came up when she always told 
told him, I'm not going to leave my husband in brackets for you. And for him, actually, he had left his wife and children. He had moved out already in October. So I think this was the discrepancy. And this might have been then when it came into his head. Well, I need to get rid of this man in order to have this woman that I supposedly love so much. And I think he initially said, no, we didn't have an affair exactly because he wants still to be close to her. He wants to keep her with him and still has a shot later on.